So you wanna start a SaaS to change your life in some way. You either want some side income while you continue working your day job, or you wanna quit the day job altogether and work for yourself. That's why on this channel, we dive deep into the reality of what it's like to build and grow SaaS companies. They're incredible and they can be life-changing. And in today's video, I'm gonna talk about six micro SaaS ideas that you can steal. If you stick around to the end, you're gonna hear a special bonus idea that would be an extreme technical challenge, but it could turn into something much larger than a micro SaaS. I'm Rob Walling. A serial entrepreneur, I've written four books on building startups and invested in more than 125 companies. A couple notes before we dive into the ideas. Today, I'm looking specifically at micro SaaS ideas. So these are mostly step one businesses in my stair step method. Often micro SaaS ideas are a single feature or they're built into an existing ecosystem, like say the Shopify or the Heroku add-on marketplaces. And today's video will almost solely focus on micro SaaS. These are things that are faster to build and faster to get to market, but usually they have a built-in ceiling where they're not gonna become a million dollar business. But if your goal is to get to 5K a month or 10 a month, micro SaaS can be a good way to go. Second point is no validation has been done on these ideas. So in your shoes, I wouldn't just go out and start building. I would definitely think about how to evaluate these ideas, talk to customers, et cetera, et cetera. And lastly, people have already started reaching out, letting me know that they are tackling some of the ideas that we've released on this channel. Please feel free to comment below with a link if you find success with any of these ideas. It's inevitable that there will be success stories coming out of the ideas shared in these videos. And once again, I'd I'd like to give a shout out to Nugget.one and its founder, Justin Vincent, for allowing me to share these ideas that we pulled from Nugget. So let's dive in. Six ideas today, plus our bonus. The first idea is a piece of software to effectively separate colors for t-shirt screen printing. As a reminder, all of these ideas are requested by real people who are experiencing trouble or difficulties at their day job, and they have a problem that they wanna solve. So this one was submitted by a screen printer. And they say, I print custom t-shirts for people, for businesses, events, what have you, and I cannot find software that will effectively separate colors for me to use in the printing process. When you print a t-shirt, it has several colors that need to be separated before you print. Most of the tools out there are just macros for Photoshop and not an actual program that will separate the colors so you can print. The options available are very expensive or essentially just plugins for Photoshop, which make it not only expensive, but needlessly complicated. One example, is Simple Seps, which costs $300 for the plugin for CorelDRAW. So not only do you need to pay $300, but you also need to buy CorelDRAW. If there was a program that could separate colors, not be reliant on another piece of software, rely on a free tool like GIMP, which is open source software, and it was affordable, it would be great for a lot of startups and veterans alike. These ideas never cease to amaze me in their detail and in the fact that there are still so many small problems that are unsolved by software today. If you're gonna run with this idea, I would start with conversations. Go to where screen printers hang out. Are they on Facebook? Do they have Reddit groups? Do they have private Slack groups? Do you need to do cold outreach? Whatever it is, finding out if this is a problem for more than just this one screen printer is exactly where I would start. Idea number two is Grammarly for SEO. The requester writes, I'm a freelance writer and web editor. My biggest concern when writing is search engine optimization. While I understand the concepts, I don't fully grasp how to improve my articles and posts for SEO so that they rank better in search engines and are found when someone does a search. What I need is software that works a bit like a grammar checker. I don't want software that helps me game the system. Rather, I need software that can read what I've written, understand context, but also offer tips or improvements for SEO. It should be able to tell me if I've overused keywords and what alternative keywords I can use. It should be updatable so that when Google changes its algorithm, it knows what Google is focusing on. This one was posted a couple years ago. So A, I'm curious if this doesn't exist today. That's probably where I'd start. But B, if it does exist, is it any good? And with the wave of AI that's coming out with ChatGPT, Jasper, Copy.ai, all the AI tools that are helping people write and be better at things like SEO and grammar, I'm curious if this tool is easy to build today or if it's such a commodity that it would be hard to stand out among competition. Idea number three is Wix for architects. The poster writes, I am an architect. I would love to have a better way to display my projects. Currently, my only options would be to hire a web designer or use a blogging service. My proposal is a program that professionals can use to showcase their work, which can be heavily customized to accommodate the specific industry and the needs that come with that. I wouldn't build Wix or Squarespace. I would think about building a template with maybe a custom widget for displaying floor plans. There are people selling premium Squarespace templates. Now, Squarespace has a marketplace, but it appears to only let you hire people and not sell templates. 
which is kind of a drag. But Wix does have a marketplace, so that could be a nice positioning for this. And frankly, to look at what are the top five or 10 website builders that exist, and which of those have marketplaces that would allow you to build an architect-focused template that you could then resell. It's almost the definition of a step one business, is to find a small gap in one or more marketplaces and fill that gap for a very specific industry. And maybe you'll find that there's architects, there's interior designers, there's photographers. I'm sure there's a kajillion photographer themes out there. But I always say that doing things in public creates opportunity. And so getting into one or more of these marketplaces is likely to lead you down a path that maybe you do discover that longer term, you wanna build an entirely new CMS. And maybe you build that on an open source piece of software like WordPress or an equivalent, or maybe down the line, your step three business is in fact a full CMS for architects. But I wouldn't take that leap from the start. But to keep this micro SaaS, it's simply building a theme or a template on an existing CMS. Idea number four is a crisp add-on for Help Scout. And this one is anonymous. It actually comes out of the Tiny Seed Slack where someone asked, does anyone use a help desk system that integrates both email and chat and also has basic chatbot scripting abilities? We use Help Scout, which does okay with email and chat, but it does not have chatbot capabilities or integrations. And several people suggested Crisp, which has really good chatbot support. But Crisp itself is a whole support platform, and the original poster didn't want to move over to Crisp. They want to use Help Scout and potentially integrate with Crisp. So maybe this idea is a Crisp add-on or integration for Help Scout. Maybe this idea is chatbot functionality that works with Help Scout. And realize, does this have platform risk? Of course it does. Is Help Scout probably working on chatbot functionality? I would guess eventually they're gonna roll it out. So there is a danger here, but there's also a need and it's something that would require a little more investigation. Idea number five is Canva for charts and graphs. The poster writes, I work as a graphic designer and specialize in data heavy information graphics. My design work often incorporates different types of charts, bar charts, pie, line charts, among others. But currently there is no designer friendly charting software on the market. Sometimes I use Excel to format charts, but the visuals are not aesthetically pleasing. I typically use Adobe Illustrator, which is the design industry standard for charting, but even this program is lacking options. I've researched options, but nothing exists that is geared towards design and aesthetics. Everything is geared towards analytics and tracking. So is this a full-blown Canva? Or do you build some type of template theme add-on for Canva or Figma or one of these other platforms? Much like the Wix for architects above, do you wanna build a full software platform? Or would you prefer to build an add-on to an existing ecosystem? For micro SaaS, I would do the latter, but obviously this requires a bit more research before taking the leap. And idea number six is better analytics for Square. The poster writes, I'm a small business owner that uses Square as point of sale and sale recording. Square's analytics are often disappointing. I wish it tracked where clicks on the online store came from, gave more detailed sales analytics like comparing month to month sales and other information. Another example, we sell some items on consignment and at the end of the month, I have to comb through all the transactions to find items sold by a particular artist in order to do their disbursements. I wish you could sort sale items by the item or category and see how well particular groups of items did. Once again, an add-on to an existing ecosystem. I think of this a little bit like the metrics providers for SaaS that were built on top of Stripe, Bear Metrics, ProfitWell, ChartMogul, and the rest. Now, it's been a couple years since this was posted. So obviously, there have been a couple things that Square has built that the poster requested, but there's still a lot that can be done with Square Analytics. The question is, how do you get distribution? Can you get in the Square App Store marketplace? Or will it be more of a grassroots effort of hanging out with Square merchants on Facebook and the private Slack groups on Reddit and getting enough traction there that you build a brand and try to build up your SEO and your referral marketing? In a second, I'm gonna give you the bonus idea that I think is technically complicated, but could get a lot bigger than a micro SaaS. Before I do that, if we're not connected on Twitter, I'm at Rob Walling, and I'm tweeting a few times a week, sometimes with threads, but I'm tweeting several times a week on all things SaaS, building, growing, and launching startups, much like you would see on this channel, and also at microconf. So if you're thinking about bootstrapping or mostly bootstrapping your SaaS company, you're gonna to wanna to follow at Rob Walling and microconf. Let's connect. So the bonus idea is a system to convert DAW files from one program to another. The poster writes, I'm a music composer mostly for film and broadcast media. In music production, a DAW is Digital Audio Workstation, and it's a program that's used to record, arrange, edit, mix, or monitor a digitally produced music project. 
Currently, there are many DAWs, Pro Tools, Logic Pro, Cubase, and many others. They've all developed different processes to store and compile data. And this data is usually retained in a sort of package or project folder. At this point, there are no DAW programs between which project data is compatible. That is to say, I cannot take a Logic Pro project file and open it with Pro Tools. This can make it very time consuming and often impossible for musicians, engineers, or studios to work together when they arrange their production through different DAWs. The solution is software that would be able to convert DAW project files between different programs. This would save a significant amount of time in transfer and would allow anyone with any level of technical skill to use the DAW of their choice without fear of limitation professionally. Obviously a deep niche idea that you would only experience if you worked in the industry. I think this is a very complex technical challenge because these are proprietary data formats that each piece of software is using. And I don't know that it's in their best interest to allow you to convert between these tools. But it sounds like this is a pretty generally known pain point that a lot of folks in this industry might have. So once again, after doing a bit of validation and maybe getting five or 10 early access customers, I would take a look at perhaps what two most popular DAWs are and take a crack at building a proof of concept that could convert from one to the other. You may find out that it's virtually impossible and that the formats change every time they update the software and that this isn't worth it. But it's one of those ideas where if you can solve this technical problem, it feels like given the amount of money that people spend in these industries on their tools, you could charge a pretty hefty price for it. If you enjoyed those six micro SaaS ideas, hit the like and subscribe to the channel. We're putting out a video every week on topics like this. We give away business ideas. I talk about how to come up with ideas, how to validate them, how to launch, build, and grow your startup. See you next week.